All right, so this is a follow-up on my last video of how to make money with video. I forgot my scooper today. Oh, son of a gun. It is blisteringly cold. We're gonna fish, we're gonna try to catch a fish, and we're gonna talk about video licensing agencies, what to look for and what to look out for. So just a brief summary of the last video. You can make money with videos that you don't even know you can make money with by either starting a YouTube channel or finding video licensing agencies who license videos out. They sell them to third parties who, you know, put them on blogs, put them on news channels, weather channels, etc., etc. Video licensing agencies have something of a dirty reputation because typically they will take anywhere between 50 to 40 to 50 percent of whatever they sell your video for. Some people say, that's too much. Why would they take 50% from my hard-earned work? If you think you can sell it to third parties, more power to you. But by and large, the BBC is not gonna answer your emails. They might answer the emails of Newsflare, Storyful, some of the bigger video licensing agencies. Um, so standard uh, fee will be 50, 40 to 50% of whatever they license the video for, per license. If you have a really good video, you could get aggressive and try to negotiate a 70% commission. You might get away with it if the video licensing agency knows that they're gonna be able to sell that video and multiple times. But generally that's it, 50% to 40% goes to the video licensing agency. They have networks of clients that the lay person will never be able to reach. That's the benefit. But what do you wanna look out for in a video licensing agency? First of all, you wanna make sure that you retain all intellectually, intellectual property rights to the video. So the fact that they have exclusive licensing does not mean that they own the copyright to the video. So you wanna make sure that whatever agreement you sign with them, you retain copyright, even if they have exclusive rights to license the video. Exclusive rights to license the video does not mean rights to the content of the video. Some video licensing agencies will only accept exclusive agreements. So you can only use one video licensing agency to license the video. Others might allow a non-exclusive license so that they can license it out, but you can also use other video licensing agencies to license it out. They might give you less uh, of a percentage on the commission because they don't have exclusivity. Whereas if they have exclusivity, it's in their best interest and their best interest only to go shop that video around aggressively. So you wanna make sure that you retain copyright. Bottom line, read the agreement, and if it's not clear from the agreement, ask them outright, do I retain copyright of my video and you only have the rights to license? Another thing you wanna look out for is don't fall over camera, don't fall over. Uh, terminating the agreement. Remember, if they have exclusive rights to license the video, you wanna make sure that you are able to cancel that agreement and there's gonna be a notice period. I just had a fish bite. There's gonna be a notice period to canceling it, but you wanna check what that notice period is going to be. So sometimes uh, with certain video licensing agencies, you can cancel with 30 days notice. And after 30 days, they no longer license the video, but anything they license between the time you notify them you want to cancel and the time they cancel. No! Oh. Darn it, stay up. Anything they license from the time you've notified them you want to cancel, They'll, they'll keep their commission on and after the period, that's it. It's your video, go find another agency. They're not shopping it around. They're not selling it anymore. They've done their work. Some video licensing agencies might have a year notice that they will retain the proceeds of any sale they make within a year of notice of termination. So just check the termination period. So that's what you wanna look out for in terms of being able to cancel. You wanna make sure that you can also cancel the exclusive agreement because if you can't, well, you've basically given them the video and even though you retain copyright, uh, there's nothing much you can do <laughs> to get your video back so you can do what you want with it. And incidentally, exclusive uh, licensing does not mean that they can do whatever they want with the video, so you might want to make sure uh, that you have some sort of veto over the editing that they can do with that video. Typically, they sell the whole video as is. You want to ma make sure that uh, they cannot edit it to change the content or to change the video itself. What do you want to look out for in a video licensing agency? You want to look out for an agency that's not necessarily going to shop your video around for your interest, but rather just use it for their own. Some video licensing agencies, you'll notice, they'll take exclusive licensing of your video, but you don't know what they're doing with it in terms of selling it. 
and then you'll notice it only on their website or on their YouTube page, which you should be getting the AdSense revenue for for that video, but not necessarily. So you wanna make sure that the video licensing agency is not just using it to promote their own brand and not sell your video. It's tough because you have to know what you're looking for and you have to be able to ask the right questions to whomever your contact is. Uh, you wanna also make sure that you have a point of contact responsiveness. It's very windy. If you don't have responsiveness from your video licensing agency, good luck trying to track things down. Responsiveness, you wanna make sure you get responses to emails. You wanna make sure you have a point of contact who gets back to you, which leads us into transparency. To the greatest extent possible, you wanna be able to verify the sales that the video licensing agency is making. It's no good if they don't tell you that they've sold it because then you don't know you're entitled to 40 or 50 or 60% or even 70% of a sale. That's fish, that's a fish, oh. So you wanna make sure that you are able to track the sales. Some will give you quarterly breakdowns, some will give you monthly breakdowns, others won't give you any meaningful breakdown, and that is something you wanna ask and look out for. How do they track the sales? How do they notify you of the sales? Others give you a per sale transaction, Newsflare in particular, which is ideal. They make a sale, you get an email, and you get paid within 24 hours. It doesn't get any more transparent and better than that. Uh, sales, copyright, oh, copyright. This is another thing that video licensing agencies are gonna do, and if you think you can do it on your own, good luck and more power to you. They're going to track down and chase copyright violations. Anybody who's been on YouTube long enough, or even Twitter, Facebook, whatever, you'll know that you put up a video, people will rip it, and you will see it on somebody else's website, and they might be making AdSense revenue off your video. They might be building their brand off your video. They might not even be giving you credit, as if credit's enough. Camera's gonna fall, don't fall. Credit might be enough, uh, but credit, uh, unless it's actual credit from a credit card, is worth just that. Good, they see your name, but they're not gonna go click to your channel, they're not gonna click on your video, and someone else is making money off your work, and that is not right. So some video licensing agencies, this is a fish, that's it. Some video licensing agencies will pursue copyright infringement relatively aggressively. And this actually comes back to a story involving Jukin Media. Jukin is another video licensing agency who pursues copyright infringement relatively aggressively. And they got into big trouble uh, because they were pursuing copyright on a channel called MXR Plays, who were doing reaction videos to viral videos. And Jukin, who owned the copyright, who owned the uh, exclusive licensing to those videos on behalf of their customers or their clients, uh, filed copyright strikes against MXR Plays because MXR Plays did not license the videos before doing their reaction videos. So they were pursuing their copyright quite aggressively with MXR Plays. MXR Plays had a fan base of 800,000 to a million and thought that it was, don't want the camera fall, thought that this was copyright abuse, copyright trolling, that MXR Plays was abusing of their copyright or exclusive licensing to issue copy strikes against the channel, which could have very serious impacts against that channel. And MXR Plays fan base went a little nuts on Jukin Media and its administration. But long story short, if you think you can go and claim copyright violations from someone who is using your content without your permission, okay. But these video licensing agencies do it much more aggressively. Don't fall, camera. They do it much more aggressively. They also have, I don't want to know if it's AI, but they have spiders that crawl the internet to automatically detect copyright infringement or people uploading your video without having licensed it from them. And they do it for you. And they also do it for you in a way that you don't have to go and send an email to some dude in Europe who's copyright abusing your video and you have to get into a discussion with someone you've never met before. It's the third party that takes care of claiming it and it's a very beneficial thing. It's beneficial because it will claim other people using your video, get the AdSense revenue from their channel, and also make sure that people license your video. News agencies oftentimes just pull clips from the internet and because nobody goes after them to claim their use, they use someone else's content, make their money off of it, and don't even give credit, let alone monetary compensation to the person whose work they're making money off of. So that's what video licensing agencies do. Um, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Can you believe I can't catch a fish? I mean, I had bites here. We actually saw bites this time. So video licensing agencies, they have a bit of a bad reputation. There's a, there's a push and pull here because content creators who like to do reaction type videos or montages or memes, 
don't necessarily like video licensing agencies because they feel that it's copyright abuse. Content creators who make videos and want to get paid when people use them for their own monetary benefit like them because they go out and claim that money for their clients. I think that's the rundown on uh, video licensing agencies. Some are good, some are bad, some are responsive, some are not, some are transparent, some are not, some are scoundrels, and some are very good. So you gotta just find the ones that work for you. Don't place all your eggs in one basket until you feel comfortable with one video licensing agency over another. We might get into the, what are they called, MCN, multiple channel networks, the ones that claim your channel as a whole. That's a totally different thing that's basically sort of no longer relevant for the internet today. Don't give all of your videos to one video licensing agency in, th in case things go sour. Uh, and then you get your experiences to see which ones work for you and which ones don't. I know which ones I've ended up with over time, but that is it. Those are the benefits, the pitfalls, what to watch out for, video licensing agencies. It's not such a dirty word and they do have some benefits. And by and large, it's not work that individuals can do on their own. Love to catch a fish, but I just had a bite. Ah, <sighs> you can see the ice is freezing on the fishing line. It's, it's cold. Okay, I think we're done. Oh, I don't think there's a worm on this. Yeah, there's no worm on the hook. How am I supposed to catch a fish? Well, there's a worm on the weight, but no worm. Eh. All right, we're done. Oh, yeah.